Hey everyone, this is Big for Life, and you're probably wondering, hey, are you doing another review back-to-back -back days? Uh, yeah, I haven't been doing that many reviews, but I'm coming to you with Iron Factory's latest set. This is from their um, Spirits of the DEC, the DJD from IDW's um, More Than Me CI series. And this is their IFEX32 Fecta and IFEX33 Mizar. Obviously, they're Kaon and Voss uh, in the Legend scale. Uh, packaging, pretty standard, nice and big. You're probably like, these guys are legend size. Why are they so um, pa packaged so largely? Because he has, he has a lot of the combiner parts. If you guys don't remember, if this is your first time checking out one of these reviews, um, this set is kind of interesting in that it forms a combiner. So we'll see a little bit of that here, including most of the chest portions as the feet, and the, as well as the feet. All right, but yeah, the packaging itself is pretty standard for them. Uh, nothing too crazy, but um, very nice nonetheless. Customs was nice enough to delay the shipment of mine and open it up, open up everything I have out of the packaging. As you can see, they do have the combiner parts here. So these are the feedums. We have. Um, I think that's Mizar, and this one is Specta. I could be wrong. These are names of constellations, I believe. We have the combined mode blaster, or at least part of it, the chest and the head, uh, and then we have a couple sets of hands and extra accessories for both of these guys. So let me scooch in just a little bit. And from here, From here, we'll take a closer look at all of these. So let's look at the feet first. They're just two big toes. I think they're supposed to go like this um, eventually. But yeah, they're silver painted. Um, later, you're going to combine them for this quote unquote statue mode. I don't know why that's a thing, but you can combine them by tapping those two in together like that. We'll deal with that later. This is the combined mode blaster. Again, this is kind of the cannon portion. It attaches with their uh, K-On to become the blaster in combined mode. Take a look at that. The chest, po chest portion. Uh, this piece actually does come out. I'll probably have to do that a little bit later so you can see inside. But you can actually, one of the things I noticed is that you can see his chest is very reminiscent of Megatron, both these little um, trapezoids there as well as the chest details. This is very clearly Megatron-esque. All right, uh, his mask does come off, and you see kind of a, a, a wind blade type paste detail. Um, I was kind of surprised about that, and even this head sculpt here is kind of wind blade-ish, so I, I don't know why that's the case, but it is. These things do move. Um, we're not really going to do too, too much with this for right now. And then the accessories. So he, they each come with a couple of sets of hands. This one's like an open hand, and then these kind of um, peg hands. And you're gonna need these primarily, um, just like with their Duba, um, their Tarn, you're gonna need these for transformation. So I don't know why they don't go ahead and just come packaged with these. The ones they come packaged with are just standard closed fists. But we're gonna need both of them to have uh, open fists to do proper transformation. So we're gonna go ahead and swap those out right now. Before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at this extra head from Vorvos. You can see it's just slightly different. It has kind of a base, base mask grill detail and kind of wider eyes. So kind of a scarier look. Um, he technically does have a third face, but the third face is the where my, oh, sorry, is the where my face detail. Where is it? There we go. So in his open palm, he actually has that, so you can see his spiky face. He does have two standard open hands, as before, and then two of the closed fists. I mean, not closed fists, the peg fists. All right, so let's go ahead and do that first before we do anything else, because we're going to need to do that anyway. And they're just pegged in, standard pegs here. Just plug them back in. And I do like that uh, figures give you these options. Um, to be honest, I, I typically don't use the peg hands when I use these figures just because it looks kind of awkward. I usually, usually use an open hand or a fist hand, 
but um, it is nice that they give you a bunch of different options with all their releases. Since at this such a small scale, it's hard to get, you know, articulated hands in, so I don't really mind it too much. The other inclusion, so he, they do come with instructions, we're not really going to talk about that, but the more important thing is that they came with an extra set of replacement shoulders and arms for Juba, their Tarn. Uh, apparently it was um, misassembled, and the shoulder joints were actually plugged pegged in backwards, so this shoulder joint was supposed to go here and vice versa. Uh, it's very easy, three screws, um, I'll I'll link to the official video manual on how to do that. And then they also include another duplicate face mask for some unknown reason, I don't know why. So, sorry about that detour. So, doing a quick 360, he looks quite nice, very clean, he does have a pretty substantial backpack where all of his stuff really goes, especially like kind of this electric chair kind of deal. Uh, I don't think, unlike um, MMCs, he doesn't have like the Scorpion alt mode that they, they made up for him. I guess you could probably fake something, but I haven't tried. But the detail is really nice. It's molded detail on the chest, the gold paint, his face sculpt is really quite nice. These little like um, Tesla coil kind of things, they're really nice. Overall, I'm very happy with the quality of this figure. Alright, so uh, let's do a quick comparison real quick. Just because I have him, this is MMC's boss, and you can see they're about half size. But they share a lot of obviously common details, and they both look quite nice to each other. I mean, his backpack's almost as big as his. So yeah, I think they look quite nice together. If you had a shelf like that, display like that, I don't think anybody would hate you for it. As far as articulation goes, he is on a ball jointed head, and the uh, the ball joint's actually in the base of the um, base of the neck and base of the um, head, I think, I believe. Or no, it looks like it's just in the base of the neck, like going into the, the body. He does have a ball joint on the, shoulder, on the shoulder, so you get a lot of that. He does have a hinge on the shoulder joint. And then, again, these kind of like Tesla coil things can move around. Doesn't have a bicep swivel, but he does have a knee, an elbow bend, as well as an elbow ball joint. So you get basically double joints there, and then obviously the fist. We just transform that, and um, just by way of the peg, it does have rotation there. He does have waist articulation. It does get kind of blocked off by his backpack. You can actually extend the backpack out and get some more. Articulation there for posability if you'd like. Uh, no ab crunch, unfortunately. His legs are also ball jointed. So you can go out really far, back quite far as well. Does have that uh, thigh swivel. Double jointed knees, which get him almost all the way back. And then he has um, an uh, ankle with a ball joint as well as a hinge that goes forward and back and then um, another joint that you can use it's mostly for transformation but you can get m even more of an ankle tilt if you need to do that his heels do have some articulation they're really for transformation so they really only go downwards like that so I think that's it um, these things on the backpack you can move them around if you want um, but they're really not designed for this mode the one thing I think is pretty funny is his electric chair kind of a cap can come up and he can wear it on himself if he's feeling kind of fancy. The backpack's supposed to transform like this, apparently. I think that looks kind of dumb. Uh, I think it looks even better like this or, um, or like that, I guess. I, I mean, they have it kind of sticking out, at least have it angled. I think it looks better kind of flat like this, though. You can probably do some other stuff with it, depending on how you want it, but I'm going to leave it like that for now. All right. So that's really it for um, robot mode. Let's go ahead and do... Oh, I'm sorry. He does actually have a uh, uh, shin swivel, too. I forgot about that. That's, again, mostly for transformation, but it is there. Now, even even um, 
if you wanted to use that, you can't make a whole lot of use of this ball joint aside from swiveling around because it's designed to only kind of go one way. And you'll see why. So transformation into his uh, electric chair mode. Uh, let's deal with the legs first. I'm going to kind of get these feet out of the way like this. Come to the front here and unpeg that. And this feet have the feet have to come at a kind of a weird angle like this. And you'll see why later. Um, if I remember correctly, this has to come up like that and angled like this. You can get kind of an L. Same thing on the other side. So like this, unpeg that. Then rotate at the thigh, and then at the lower knee joint. So he's kind of like doing a kneeling pose. All right, for his hands, they say flip them upside down. I don't think that's the best option. Um, I think it's best to have kind of like the fists like that. It'll look a little bit nicer. You can leave these shoulder things however you'd like. That backpack we showed before, go ahead and extend that. Tuck the head in. Close it back up. And the rest of this, most of it's kind of like unfurling his backpack. Get this up, open these. This is kind of accordioned in. And these pegs here will go in here. Let's do that in a second. And then the arms come around to the front, like so. Um, so I like it since we're going to be looking mostly from the top. That's why I kind of like having the red up. But if you go by their standard, they say to have it rotate it out like that. And this is really up to you. It doesn't really make much of a difference. So go ahead and peg these in. And like I said, you have to have the, oops, sorry. Then I have to feed a kind of an angle to get them to kind of sit in here. And that's, that's really it. These can open and close as you'd like. Uh, I haven't even actually tried this. Let's get his gun off and see if he can sit in here just fine. I guess his backpack is kind of a little too big. So no electric chair for you today. Uh, while we are taking a look at this real quick, we can go over kind of the articulation. He does have a bunch up here, a little footrest thing can tilt up and down. Again, these things can close to grab onto whoever is in the death chair. Um, by and large, you know, that's kind of what I expected. Really, the backpack makes up the most of this. All right. Um, you know what? Let's do each of them transformed into their alt modes first, and then we'll do the combined mode. So for Voss or um, Mizar, uh, let's see. The first thing we'll show off is his articulation as well as his weaponry. His rifle does peg in here on the one side does have the, um, what are they called? those called, tripods? Not tripods, what are the goals? You know, the stand thingies for the, the sniper gun. It's not very sniper gun-ish, I would say, but it does the job. It does have some nice pink details or purplish details there. He does have these kind of shoulder cannons that can tilt at various angles. Backpack is not too shabby as far as 360s go. It is pretty big, but it's kind of highly mounted. It almost looks like an army backpack to me. You know how they're pretty high and bulky at the top. Articulation wise, he has a ball jointed head. His head is also on kind of like a hinge thing, gray hinge here to get a little bit of movement out of that. The shoulders are on ball joints as well as a hinge. Uh, you can't get that much up just because of the, this thing. You can get it out the way and then you can kind of articulate that as you need to. Uh, no bicep swivel. He does have a uh, elbow hinge as well as the ball joint at the elbow. So the ball joint really kind of acts as uh, a replacement for the bicep swivel. And again, his fist or wrist also um, swivels around because it's on the post. He does have waist articulation. You can go 360. Uh, no ab crunch. Ball jointed hips that give him a lot, a lot of range. Thigh, thigh uh, ball joint, which really is really just a thigh hinge. 
don't really use it that much like this, but I guess you could. Um, I, it's not really useful for anything that I've found, and it's not part of transformation. It does have a double jointed knee that goes all the way back like that. And then his ankle also has a hinge at the top. And then uh, a ball joint in there gives you a little bit of tilt in various directions. And that's it for this tiny guy. Oh, I should have done comparisons. Ah. Okay, I'll try to do a group shot at the end so you can see him with um with his what's it called? His teammate, his tarn. Here you can see him with MMC's loss. They look quite nice together. Oh, I guess I should stand him up. A little bit less than twice his height. But I think this one looks really cool because of the rifle. Putting him off to the side, we can get into transformation. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is kind of deal with the backpack. Kind of just need to pull this back. There's a peg here that goes right into the center of his chest in the in the cavity. Uh, you want to lift this up, rotate this around. All right, leave this be for now. You can put his head in. His arms, you want to rotate them at the shoulder joint so that these pegs are facing this way. And then you're going to want to do a bend at this elbow, bend at this elbow, rotate at the fist like that so the bottom of the fist is facing you this way. And then you want to swing this all the way around so he grabs that peg with his fist. So again, this is kind of why you need to have um, this optional fist in here. It's not really optional for his transformation. Come on. This should just peg right in. What's going on? Can't get it to go in. There we go, finally. All right. Same thing on this side. I want to rotate the wrist like so, get it all swung around, and hopefully I'll have less of an issue getting this one pegged in, but since I said that, I'm sure I will have issues. Probably just, oh man. Did I have this much trouble before? I don't know what's going on. There we go, like so. And then you want to bring this up like this. Be careful of the chest piece, go like so. All right, so that's the upper body. Lower body, you want to split the legs. This piece, the backpack piece is going to come underneath. There's a little tab here for the butt going into the backpack. Then I'll secure that there. This will close around like this. Before you lay that flat, you want to rotate these on the ball joints and they tab together as two halves of kind of like the scope. Like that. Um, on the leg, you want to rotate at the thigh ball joint. Both of these. And then once again at the ball joint at the knee. And when you do that, you want to tuck in the knee so it kind of sits in that little uh, recess. The two halves will peg together. Like that, and then you kind of angle the foot like so. And then there's a tab that goes into the um, slot that is formed by the two legs coming together. Lastly, go ahead and grab this. That little neck piece here has a tab on the bottom. You just tab that in. And here we have uh, Miser or Voss in his, his alt mode, which also ends up being a gun for combined mode. Okay, so here are both of them. Uh, I actually don't like this kind of look up front with the arms. You can probably do something else. Um, I think it probably looks better just having it down like this, personally. But again, it's up to you. It makes it a little bit thicker, 
there, but I think it makes the front look a little bit sleeker. But again, it's up to you, whatever you want to do. Officially, up and around like this. Do you prefer this or this? <laughs> Neither is honestly really great, but it's pretty good for a legend skill figure that turns into a gun. All right. So let's get this guy into his um, combine mode and then uh, we'll show off some of the other options. So first off, let's go ahead and rotate these back around. I'm gonna deal with the arms, get these Tesla coils down like that. I wanna get the ball joint open and the wrist back around to the normal position. Like that. Get these arms up and together, kind of in like a shockwave style thing. His arms become what will be the barrel of this gun. This piece is going to fold around and collapse on itself like that. Uh, these pieces will finally come into play. These They don't even show this in the instructions. You do need to rotate them uh, like this on the ball joint to get them like that. The backpack, once you get this untabbed down here or unpegged down here from the legs, you're going to collapse it back up like it was going back into um, robot mode. Like so. The lower body, you do need to rotate at the waist, so untab or slide out the, that uh, backpack piece. Get those around 180 degrees. And then the feet, kind of straighten them out. Um, at the thigh, you're going to swivel that all the way around 180 degrees so that the knee joints are allowing you to bend this way. You want to collapse and peg in the feet like they were before. And then the feet kind of come like this. And where is it? And the toe has to be kind of um, on the side of the claw like thing. You'll know you did it right because once you get this up here, you'll see that there's actually a little tab hidden underneath there. And we're going to need to make use of that. So we can fold this up, rotate this around like so. And then make use of that double joint at the knee, and it kind of looks like this. All right, bring in this section. These these two pieces kind of open up. First thing you want to do is um, tab in the fists so that the bottom of the fists grab onto that. You're going to want to close this up first. No, wait. Yeah, this first. And those tabs I, I pointed out before, they tab in here. There we go. Looks something's not going right. That peg goes into the crotch. Let's try to get this one in. This one wasn't cooperating with me before. There we go. Oh, no, of course this one came undone. There we go. Like that. So everything's kind of squared off. Ah! Everything's squared off like that. Now you can close this piece. And there is his combined blaster mode. And I'm guessing this ta this will tab into the forearm of one of the remaining guys that we have not seen yet. That is his blaster mode. Obviously reminiscent of Torn's blaster. Let's bring him out real quick. Obviously similarly styled. Uh, and that's it for these guys. Uh, let's go ahead and transform them back really quick into uh, their robot mode. And then we'll go ahead and do make use of these other pieces to show you like kind of like the statue mode because you do need these pieces to do that. So let's go ahead and open this up, untab this from the various tabs here, make him let go of the gun pieces. Come on, there we go. 
think we're gonna leave this like this for now. Close that up. And well, since we're here, might as well do it. So this is gonna go in like this tab. Yeah, I was right. Am I not right? We should go. Yeah. So see, there's this uh, slot here, and this these two tabs that form from the two halves. And then there's pegs on the front. And for some reason, it wasn't locking into place before. That goes like that. Um, where's my spudger? So they show you this separated. I don't know why it comes combined, but they show you that you can actually take the chest off, like so. It's just a big blocky tab there. And then they want you to take the mask off and peg it into the chest for statue mode. Again, I don't really know why. And then there's these I-beam slot, uh, I-beam pieces here that will go right there. Um, it's very tight on mine. Um, so just be careful. Again, the, the pieces themselves are pretty sturdy and hardy plastic, but you know, this could easily, with the tolerances here, easily damage your figure. So just be careful. Uh, you want to push that down enough where these tabs will actually tab into the backpack. I think I'm probably not down enough. See, he's kind of leaning a little bit for back. But that's as comfortable as I feel doing at this point. There might be some other pieces that combine with this later down the line, but um, this is all we have for now. All right, so let's get these guys transformed back um, into their various modes. I guess for him, we'll go go ahead and stop by his, um, what's it called mode again? His chair mode, just so you guys know it. So rotate those around, straighten out the legs, straighten out the toes. Get this off to the side like that. Open up the treads again. And then this piece will come around like this. Um, oh, that's why. So I gotta rotate the waist first. And then get these around this way. There we go. They were facing the wrong way for a second. Um, the arms, again, just bring them back down. Angle these however you'd like. And then rotate at the, at the elbow to get them facing the front of the chair. See, lift this up, unfurl all of this, get this pegged in, like so. All right, and then rotate these around on the ball, ball joints. There he is in electric chair mode again. And then to finish off, let's get them back into robot mode. I'll peg these. Collapse all this up. Close this up. This backpack will come back. Again, this is the official transformation. I think that looks kind of silly unless you want kind of a weird booster pack. Um, I thought I found like a different way you could do it as well to make it a little bit more compact. Maybe something like this. But anyway, you get the idea. It doesn't really matter. It's it's going to stick out regardless. Get those claws kind of down. Get the legs down. Pegged in. And this uh, squared off piece has to face the front. Get the ankle and feet in position. There we go. Arms around. And the last thing we have to do is open the backpack. This is actually kind of difficult, uh, trying to get this head back. Uh, the, front, the easiest way I found is just to kind of pull down on his 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 chin. Uh, it acts kind of like a tab, his little goatee. And there we have their, uh, what is his name, Fecta? Well, I don't remember his name, it's Kaon. 
back in his robot mode. Uh, let's bring in Tarn just so you guys can see him. And then we'll do group shot once uh, I get this done. So on this, untab that, flip up the stands. From the bottom here, we're gonna unpeg or untab that. Get the legs split apart. Bring this backpack, unpeg it from his butt there. Finish off the legs by rotating at the thighs and once again at the knees. Getting them all faced in the correct direction. All right, the backpack, we're gonna rotate at that hinge and then collapse everything essentially. This piece here, separate the two halves and get them around. So one of the things that um, people have talked about is kind of the disappointing like finale to um, more than meets the eye, at least when it comes to the DJD. They kind of all just bit the dust at the same time in the final battle. Spoiler, sorry about that. Um, and that is kind of, a, I felt the same way, kind of a disappointing um, end to such a cool team. And they're all, they all end up being basically nobodies. But in, so, in the designs themselves and the lead up to the final battle, these guys were definitely the eye catchers of that series. All right, the head is going to pop out. Uh, I guess I should show this as well to be complete. So with the instructions that they give you for um, Duba's fix, you can actually go ahead and... I'll have this backpack open. You can replace the head by using the screwdriver that they come included with this set. Remove that and then replace with the kind of, again, grilled kind of thing. You might be able to pop it off without using the screwdriver. I wouldn't recommend it though for this one. It does look like a very tight fit overall. Should separate, yeah. And then as you would expect, go ahead and screw this back on. Very simple. It's nice that they included a little screwdriver for you. And once again, this peg will go right into the backpack, uh, no, right into the back and peg into the front of the chest or the rear of the, inside of the chest. This guy can go ahead and hold this or we'll get go ahead and peg it onto the backpack. Like so. And that's it. So we have our DJD crew, at least up to this point, all assembled so you get an idea of what they all look like. So a really fun set. I'm excited to get the other two, their Helix and Tesserus. And I think that will round out the crew so that we can get um, a combined version of this guy. But yeah, what do you think of this set? Do you like the DJ DJD? Were you as disappointed as most of us with the um, finale of these guys? Are you collecting this legend set? If so, what do you think about them? It's nice that we're getting some other scales of the uh, DJD. We don't we don't see a whole lot of folks doing the um, comic book designs, aside from MMC, obviously. But yeah, if you liked the review, if it helped you out with anything, uh, give me a like, share, and subscribe. If you want to pick this up, you can click on the Toy Dojo link in the description below, as always. And um, yeah, that's all for today, everyone. Hope you have a good one.